Coach, give us your initial thoughts on the game. Proud of the guys. Um, got got to look at some things. I don't think we're very good in the second quarter, but I, I got to look at some stuff there. But we um, had given up given up some easy plays and didn't play very well in the second quarter, and then we fought back uh, at halftime. We're up. Got a chance to blow the game out, go up 24 to three, throw an interception. Um, we never rebounded from it. We let them drive a field and score a touchdown, and all of a sudden it's 17-10. And then we had something else go bad at the end of the first half. They, oh, the, the late hit on the quarterback. They drive the length of the field and score on us again. We go down at halftime 17 to 17. You, you go in there 17 to 17, you've just had a really bad 15 minutes on the field. Our guys could have folded. They could have not played well, but we didn't. Now, our guys came back out in the second half and played it just like it was the start of the game. And, and Re Regan played well, but played well in the second half. Um, hats off to our defense. Our defense outscored their offense seven to nothing in the second half, and their offense is pretty darn good. Coach Justin Miller, two touchdowns, two interceptions in this game had that completion percentage more where it was uh, a year ago. What did you see from him tonight? I don't have stats. What, what were the stats? It was 68% completion, 230-some-odd yards, and two touchdowns. Two I'm, pr I'm pretty salty about the way Justin played in the first half. Here's what he did in the second half. He didn't do anything to hurt us. He's taking the easy access throws. He's checking the ball down. He's not doing anything to hurt our football program. But the two turnovers in the first half are uncalled for. It's the second straight year. He's thrown an interception in the end zone against them in the first half that would have blew the game open. And, and you can't have that. Not only that, it's a blown coverage. And their kid knows they blow the coverage, so he just apexes. He splits the two wide receivers, and he didn't throw the ball on a, on a rope and allows him to break on the football. And then the, the interception at the end of the first half, the kid's double covered, and I haven't seen the film. He might have been triple covered. He was close to triple covered. So, so if you got triple coverage, it means there's one or two guys running wide open. That's the way this game works, and we didn't find them. Um, moving forward, second half. He could have folded up at halftime. He could have felt sorry for himself. He comes out in the second half, and the completion percentage, I think, was pretty high. And then we needed that first down at the end of the game to ice the game. He goes and gets the first down with his feet, and that's not his forte. But he goes and gets it. The kid's tough. The kid's a winner. He throws a touchdown pass at the end of the game. He played well in the second half. Talk about that shot to Isaiah Wooden on second down, 43-yard line, everyone thinking you're running out the clock, and you guys dial up the dial move, the double move. What were you thinking there? Yeah, Coach, I didn't want to take a shot. It took me a second for him to talk me into it. <laughs> I even gave one of those, <laughs> out, out loud. Because if you, throw, if you throw that thing and it's incompletion, they're going to get the ball back with some time on the clock. Um, but it, it worked out in our favor. Coach Hyde knows what he's doing up there. It's a good play call. Good play call, great pass, maybe even a better catch. Isaiah Wooden was bottled up in that first half. Was there a focus at the break to try and get more fault. involved? That's our fault. It's coaching staff fault. Coaching staff has to do a better job. When, when, you're, when you have the best player in the game, the best player on the field, it would be pretty smart of you to get the ball in his hands, right? It just makes sense let him touch the ball a couple times. I'm glad you saw that because I saw it too. We have to get him. We have to do a better job as coaching staff of getting him to football. Defensive resilience has been a theme the last couple of weeks. You know, allowing field goals instead of touchdowns against UC Davis to keep you in it. Goal line stand. Yeah. Coming up with three interceptions against quarterback and Matt Morris, who hadn't tossed one all year. What what worked for John Kelly's unit in that secondary? Yeah, their stats are wrong. He's turned the ball over. He's thrown interceptions. We 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 laughed at the stats. That make make Regan look like a stat guy for BYU or Utah now. Um, <laughs> They turned the ball over four or five times this year, and you look on the website and it said zero turnovers. I went, nah. I'm watching the film like I'm watching you turn the football over. But he, um, opportunistic, uh, opportunistic our DBs were um, all the way up to the pick six at the end of the game. Um, but, but some good ones there. Um, Jordan Washington, grad transfer, his first pick with us. LeCarrier, Pleasant, uh, Johnson, Pleasant, Pleasant Johnson, LPJ, his first pick with us. And, and then Cody Coleman, that might have been his first pick. He's been with us two years, might have been his first. I know it's the first pick six of his career. So it, it, happy for those young men and the way they played there. Um, and giving it to you guys straight. Our Achilles, we're better on defense. We're better coached than we were last year. The kids believe more. We've got better players. All the way around, we're better defensively. Here's where we're at. Every time something goes wrong, they give up seven points, and you cannot do that. So we, with the one drive, we're going to stall them on their end. We get the bad late hit on the quarterback call. As soon as the late hit gets called on us, we give up three, four plays, touchdown. 
if I'm not mistaken, Justin's interception in the middle of the field, they drove length of the field. They drove length of the field on both interceptions, scored touchdowns. Scored touchdowns, if, if my memory is right. I think they had a missed field both at the end of the half. Off of one of them? Off the okay, off yeah. the interception. Got you, got you. So they had an opportunity to score three for three. Every time something bad happens, you cannot give up a score. And we've got to fix that defensively. Um, we're tough. We're tough. We, we had passed defense in all night tonight. Didn't give up any rush yards. So. What do you want to carry over into Central Arkansas? Yeah, Central Arkansas is the best run team in the country. Maybe the biggest, most physical. Got the two best running backs in FCS football. By far the best back. Any kid rushed 200 yards against North Coast State. So they're going to come out and try to run the football. We've got to play run defense. Coach, uh, just give us your thoughts on, on the crowd tonight, homecoming win. How about that? How, how about hey, hat, Hats off to this town and the alumni and all that. Um, guys, it's my 29th year of college football. Never seen an O for team sell out. Never seen an O for team pack the stadium the way they packed that stadium tonight. Um, great atmosphere. Great atmosphere. Great crowd. Uh, it's, it's a testament to what's important around here. Football is really important. It's a football town. Um, and good for us. Good, good for us to be doing college football in this town. Special atmosphere tonight. Whatever this stadium seats, we had 1,500, 2,000 more than that in here. Yeah. Coach, any final thoughts on the game? No, go Thunderbirds.